Hello, welcome to Shamika Talks, where I share with you my family values and things that matter to me the most. And one of the things that matters to me most is food. I love food. And so today I'm going to show you how I make vegan Zupa Toscana. And if you want to learn how to make it, keep watching this video. All right, bye. Okay, so here's what I used for large potatoes, impossible sausage, silk creamy cashew milk, vegetable broth, vegan country crock plant butter, an onion, a small one. Um, I use some of this vegan broth seasoning, garlic. This is literally four tablespoons of flour. Accent, oregano, crushed pepper, salt, pepper, black pepper, and kale. Those are the ingredients I use for this dish for my recipe. And if I leave anything out, I'll add it in later, but I think this is pretty much all I used. Okay, so one of the first things you're gonna do is rinse and clean the kale. I soaked mine in water with a few tablespoons of white vinegar. Um, and then once I soaked it for about maybe five minutes, I went ahead and drained it and put it in a bowl. So that's my kale. Now I'm gonna peel my four potatoes. Okay, so here are the potatoes. I will say this, um, the last time I accidentally cut the skin off. Um, I typically don't cut the skin off, but it was so, so, so good that I decided to cut the skin off again. So once you um, cut the skin off of the potatoes, you slice them, I slice them. Um, okay, so I take it and I just slice it like potato chips. Thin, kind of as thin as I can get them. Okay, so this is how they should look when they're done. It's about this thick, as thin as you can get them, really, in my opinion, but some are a little bit thicker. Um, but yeah, so that's the potatoes. Next, I'm gonna cut my one small onion. That's it. And I'm gonna cut this like small, like I'm gonna cut these as small as I can get them. Okay, so these are the onions right there. Okay, so I'm putting in this pan four tablespoons of that vegan butter. And I'm gonna saute the onions and probably like a teaspoon of garlic. I like garlic and I like onions, but um, 
I get a lot of acid reflux and onions and garlic are not good for people who have bad acid reflux. So onions. Again, this is just a small onion. Because of my reflux issues. Now I'm going to add this much garlic for me. This much for me. Once this sautés down, I'm gonna go ahead and add my... Okay, so this is the Impossible Sausage. I don't want my phone to get too hot, so I took it off for a little bit, but um, the key to this is to chop it up like the sausage. Um, and just keep chopping it up like it's meat, even though it's not. So I'm gonna keep sautéing this up until it browns. And then I will bring you back. All right. I forgot. I'm going to go ahead and add like a touch of hot pepper flakes. Like a touch. See that? See that little touch I put in there? Just a touch. Okay, so I'm going to add the salt. And I'm going to show you exactly what I do. I'm just putting a little bit of salt. Not a lot. See that? I'm not putting a lot of salt, at least right now I'm not. <laughs> Pepper, same thing. That's it. This is accent. This seasoning, I like it because it brings out, it enhances the natural flavor in food. So it's not salt, but it wakes up the flavor and it kind of prevents you from putting a lot of salt in your food. At least for me it does. And this is oregano and I'm just putting a touch of oregano touch see and I'm about to transmit this all of this into a bigger Dutch pot and I'll be back and the reason I'm putting it into a bigger Dutch pot is because I'm gonna start combining all the ingredients like the, the potatoes and you know making my um my uh, broth and all of that so I'll be back Okay, I am so sorry. I had my light off the whole time, y'all. So here we are. This is a Dutch pot. Um, I hope you guys can see that better now. Now is where I'm gonna add in this eight cups of flour because it's gonna be a part of the broth thickening up because obviously we're not using creamer and milk and all of that. So here we are. I'm going to mix that in. It's going to kind of stick into the meat. Don't mind the bottom of my Dutch pot, y'all. I need a new one. <laughs> Hopefully my pot is not the only one that looks like this in the kitchen. But see how that thickened up and it kind of like absorbed into the meat? That's kind of what you want to happen. See that? Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna add in six cups of cashew milk. This is my cashew milk. Six cups. Two, three, four, And when you saute the flour in with the meat, it just kind of helps to make 
the broth smooth, like the the uh, slurry. Like this is like a slurry of flour and milk slurry. Um, and you don't see any lumps. You see that? You don't see the lumps. It's just heating up with the sausage. Again, this is impossible sausage. All right, so I'm gonna let that go ahead and cook, simmer, and we'll be back. Okay, so I just added a little bit more salt. I just did my little, you know, um, pass through, one pass through, and I added some pepper, and that's it for now. What you can do is you can kind of taste the broth as you go along and, you know, just see how it tastes. If you think it needs more salt, pepper or whatever, just add it in. You can taste it and, you know, um, after a few more minutes, I'm gonna add in some vegetable chicken broth along with some vegan chicken bouillon powder all right i'll be back okay so you see it boiling a little bit now i'm gonna add in eight cups of vegetable broth one two three See that? Okay. I'm making a little bit of a mess, but you get the point. All right. Okay, so I added the broth. Okay, so my um, phone is getting hot and I don't want to hold it directly over the stove, but I added the vegetable broth and you see what's happening there. I'm getting ready to add two tablespoons or actually two teaspoons of chicken bouillon but it won't be the regular chicken bouillon it's going to be a vegan chicken bouillon this is what it is it's a broth seasoning vegan chicken i'm going to add two teaspoons of this to this broth and this is what my teaspoons looking like like that okay once i'm done this i'm going to go ahead and add my potatoes and let it cook for about 30 minutes and then when it's done cooking for 30 minutes, I'm going to add in my kale. All right, I'll be back. Okay, so here we are. I'm about to add these potatoes. Here are the potatoes. I'm gonna go ahead and add them in. I don't want this splattered on my phone, so. <laughs> okay, so the potatoes are in. Can't see them, but they're in there. See them? Okay. So I'm gonna let this cook for about 30 minutes and I'll be back. Okay, so it's been 30 minutes and this is what it's looking like after 30 minutes. Um, the potatoes are definitely soft. And I'm gonna add the kale. Okay, so this is the kale that I'm adding. I would say add two cups of kale but this is four cups of kale like pat it down because I like kale so the last time I put two cups this time I said I was gonna put more so that's why there's so much here so I'm gonna put it in I'll be back okay so that's the kale now they say that you're supposed to put it in and leave it in for like five minutes and then um, serve it but I like to cook it I like to cook it down and I like my kale to be soft and, and cooked for real. So I'm gonna leave it in and let it simmer down for maybe 15 minutes. All right. Okay, so this is how it's looking. Uh-oh, it's steamy. This is how it's looking. There it is. 
Like I said, I put a lot of kale in it this time. I wanted a, lo a lot more kale, but that's it. All right, let me know how you liked it. You can taste it and add salt and pepper or any kind of seasonings you want to make it taste the way you want it to taste. All right, there it is. Okay, there it is. Don't mind my dishwasher. But there it is. That's mine with all that kale in it. And that's my husband's. All right. See you next time. Bye.